Masanto siya labi si kay namin. Naimbag arabi i kada kayo amin. Every night we look forward to another exciting, inspiring, and spirit-filled messages. Only here in Proclaim. Tayo po na sa ikatlong gabi na ng pag-aaral ng magagandang mensahe mula sa aking Panginoon. Truly, there are many things our human mind cannot comprehend. But if we ask God's guidance as we seek His words, we will be enlightened as last night's topic. Tamang-tamang pagkaka-explain sa mensahe kagabi, brother. Yes, and tonight it will be further explained. We will know more each of the persons of the Godhead. Totoo yan, at sa gabing ito, dadako tayo tungkol sa God the Father. Mga kapatid, inaanyayahan namin kayong mag-comment kung meron po kayong mga katanungan at naisipan na langin. If you have any questions or prayer requests, just comment below or you may contact the numbers flashing on your screen. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to another message of truth from Pastor Edwin Payet. Pero bago yan, sabay-sabay natin awitin ang ating theme song at susundan ng opening prayer. tonight as he deliver your words to us. Be with him, bless him, and bless also those people who are watching and listening. Father, help us to grow each and every day with you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayers with the forgiveness of our sins, whether in actions, in thoughts, or in deeds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh 
choose my way I chose to move away He loved me When hope had taken wing He loved me When I lost everything He bought me Redemption's work was done Through Jesus Christ, His Son Who shall separate me From the love of God Shall dreams of tomorrow Possessions, the threat of war, or man's oppressions. In all these things, we trees are reward. We trees are reward through Jesus Christ. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Sabbath, brothers and sisters in the Philippines, it has been a privilege for me to be invited to share God's word with you tonight. And as we start, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this opportunity to know you, to know you because you love us. You give us your word and we can study to know you more. And as we do so, may your Holy Spirit be with us and inspire us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If there is something that Satan has succeeded in, it is in creating a distorted portrait of God in the minds of human beings. Many picture God to be like themselves, selfish exacting, dictatorial, cruel, vengeful, slow to forgive, or even quick to punish. But if we want to know who is our Father, who is the God Father of the Bible, we need to go back to the revelation of God himself in the world. And as we do so, I would like you to follow me in the different texts 
that the Bible presents God the Father. And from there, we will learn to know who God is, what he does for us, and what he wants us to do, uh, facing him as a father. And to start with, let's say, why does the Bible call him the father? Why not just God? Why God calls himself to be a father? The first answer can be found in Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 10. It's, it reads, Do we not all have one father? Has not one God created us? That's very interesting. All, the Bible says, Malachi says, all have one father. But who is that one father? He is the God who created us. God calls himself the father of humankind because he created everything. That's very important because we know that our mother and father has, give us, has given us life and that's why we call them father or mother. Our heavenly father in the same way tells us, you can call me father because I gave you life. I created you. More than that, the Bible gives us a second reason to call him Father. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 5 and 6. He might redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Because your sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Why do we have to call him Abba, Father? Paul says we call him Abba, Father, because we have been redeemed we have been adopted god did not only created us he provided redemption for human beings two important reasons to call him father as we continue let's try to understand why god called himself creator and god called himself the one who provide redemption God is our Father and wants to be called Father because he created us. We already said it. If we go in the first verse of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we all know the text. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We don't have so much description. We do not know where God comes from. It doesn't say what he looks like, where does he live. It simply states one thing. It simply states that in the beginning, God. He existed before the beginning, before the events, before the earth, before anything. He is our father in the sense that when things started, he already was there. He was self-existent. Existent. And because he was there, he created all things. Gave the possibility of life to all things. And how can he give life to all things? The Bible tells us the answer in Psalm chapter 36. Psalm 36 verse 9 for with you is a fountain of life in your light we see light with you is the fountain of life god can create our father can create 
because he is the source of life. He was kind enough to give life to our first parents and to each one who came in this earth. Yet, God did not just create things to leave them unattended or aside. God gave, uh, created us, gave us life, and every day he continues to do something for us. We can find that in Psalm 104. Psalm 104. Psalm 104 and verse 27 to 30. They all wait for you to give them their food in due season. You give to them, they gather it up. You open your hands and they are satisfied with good. You hide your face, they are dismayed. You take away their spirit, they expire and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. The Father is not just a far remote creator somewhere we don't know. He's our creator, he sustains life, and he, stay, he stays there, near to each one of us, providing he is good enough to provide to all our need. He gives us the brief of life, food, intelligence, thinking. Every day he chooses to provide for all, all things. And since he is the creator, he is a source of life, the Bible calls him the sovereign of all the universe. Why would he be called the sovereign of all the universe? Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, and verse 29, 21. Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. The last part of the verse I'm interested with. He will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. He is sovereign since he is creator, but he is sovereign also because he has a power to subdue all things. Yet, it is because he has all power to control everything he cannot say that I'm the one, I will oppress you, I will dictate to you. No. God create. God has, is a source of life. God sustains. God is sovereign. But God is not a dictator. He is there with me. Provide for me because he is love. We can find that in First John chapter 4. The last, the last apostle to die after Jesus went to heaven left us with three epistles. And the main theme of these three epistles would be to describe God's love for his children. First John chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as it is, so also are we in the world. He created us because he loved us. Our Heavenly Father is powerful, but he is also loving. He is a powerful, loving God. In his love, he decided to create, to give life. By his eternal love, he decides to sustain every day. He rules over all creation. 
and that is why he provides to the needs of all. We do not deserve this. Yet in this love he chose to provide. Why would he do so? Because he's our father. He chose to be our father in creating us, providing for us, and taking care of us. He's also our father, as we have said in the beginning, because he chose to redeem us. What does it mean? Talking to the Israelites, God said through Moses in Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19. Verse 2, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2. Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, I am holy. What does it mean to be holy? Holiness here refers first and foremost to the essential nature of God. The term holy means set apart, Unique, distant. Why? Because God like righteousness, like justice. These are the foundation of his throne. God hates sin. God loves that we choose to be his children. But he wants us also to behave as his children. And yet when our first parents chose to sin. God could have put us aside, but he did not just discard us or abandon us to ourselves. Before creating us, he carefully planned, carefully prepared a plan to remove us from sin, to reconcile himself with us. And therefore, First John chapter four verse nine. First John chapter four. First John chapter four. Verse nine. By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, so that we might live him. Wonderful. Exceeding love to show us that through Jesus we can have redemption, reconciliation. Why did God chose to redeem us? Because he loved us. By love he chose to give life to creation, but by love again, the Father chose to give his Son to die for us, to die for our sins. So that by his death, we can live. We have simply all of this because he loved us. It is also by love that the Father gave us life again at Calvary. We barely understand what kind of love can give in such a way. Yet the cross reveals as nothing else can the truth about our Father. It reveals the truth about his eternal character of love. Do I understand really that? What does this mean? God's holiness and justice which require that sinners should be destroyed. This love, mercy and grace are mixed here with his justice and holiness. It makes forgiveness and salvation available to all who will receive Jesus in their lives. But these are all provided by the Father. What does this imply for me in my daily life? The first thing Galatians chapter 4 verse 6 says, because you are sons, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son in your, into your heart, saying, crying, Abba, Father. We have been created and redeemed 
Therefore, we are God's son. And if we are God's sons and daughters, we can legitimately call him father. God longs for me to call him father. He wishes that I recon recognize him for who he is. And as he provides every day for my needs, he still sustains my life. And if I am a sinner, God places an immense value upon me. In his enormous love, he provides everything so that I can recognize and chose him as father. In the description of a court of his heavenly throne in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, we see the heavenly beings willingly offering worship to the Father. For what reason? Because they express their submission to God's authority for his sovereign will to create and sustain all things. The chapter after that, Revelation chapter 5, verse 13, we see this time every knees, every knees bowing down in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, bowing down to worship. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As I continue my life existence, what difference does it make to know God as my Father? What difference does it make in my relationship with God the Father? Because God's character has been misunderstood and misinterpreted, Jesus was sent to this earth to show the world who God the Father is. His daily life is an example for us to follow so that we too can give the world a true picture of God's character by our lives. Our, others, those around us will see and be able to witness that there is a father. We may not see him with, his, with our eyes, but we can know that is there. It is written. We have experienced it in our lives. Second Corinthians chapter four verse six. Second Corinthians chapter four verse six. And that will be my last verse for tonight. Second Corinthians chapter four verse six. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Does my face, my life, dispel the darkness of Satan's lies about God? Does do I shed the light of his glory, his goodness, his mercy, and his truth around me? Am I echoing the praise of God so that everyone that I meet will understand a little better the greatness of his love? Do I love to speak of his wondrous works for me and in me? In the Psalms, we find the psalmists saying, I will extol you, my God and my King. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, great is in his loving kindness. Psalm 145. Isaiah describes the greatness of God's love by comparing it to a mother. The love of a mother for a child. And he says, can a mother forget a nursing child? Can a mother not have compassion for the son of her womb? Even if she forgets, me I will never, never forget you. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 5. He longs for me to love him as 
my heavenly father. If he's my father, he wants me also to experiment, experiment him as a father. I may not see him, but he's telling me he's there. He's there present daily. He's real. His love is real. Let us choose to look for him every day. When I awake, do I look for him? What does he have to say to me? Do I take time to talk and listen to my father? My father is there longing for me to look for him, to listen to him. When I awake, he wants to accompany me to school, to work. He wants to be there with me in my joy, with me in my needs, in my difficulties. He wants to be there for me. I'm not alone. I'm not like an orphan looking for my own ways into the world to look for a job, to look for a wife or a husband or for solutions in my life. I'm not alone. He says, I am a father. If somebody may forget you, I will not forget you. So why not experiment? Why should I not experiment? To, why should I not choose to experiment him in my life? If he loves me, he also wants me to love his other children in the world. He was good and loving enough to show his love to me through the revelation of his word. He sent Jesus to reveal what kind of love he has for me and for others. Thus, he calls me to love also as I have been loved. Why is it not simple for us to love others? I believe, as the Bible says, because so many times we love ourselves and we don't love our father. It's like our father is not real. Or maybe we feel him too far. I don't see him anyway. And I think that I can make it on my own. I cannot. Yet, God says, I'm there, and I'm there to help you in your life and to help you to love others. We just have to ask him, ask him to accept others, to understand my wife, my children. To, um, people may not see or understand things as I do, but if I ask my father, who is real, who is here, Help me. Be my father in that situation. Not only good, but also difficult times. If I choose to ask my father, God promise us, I will not forget you. My father will love me and will help me to love others. I am so blessed, so fortunate to have such a father. He has everything and he is everything. He is there for me. Why should I be selfish to have such a father only for me? God wants me to share this privilege to others so that they may know, know him also and experiment this love for themselves. Let us therefore choose tonight, but also tomorrow and every day until he comes. Let us choose to learn every day to know to experiment our Heavenly Father better. Let us choose to be a better child, a worthy child of our Heavenly Father. Let us choose to rightly represent our Heavenly Father in the world. We cannot do that alone. But God, our Father, promised us to be there for us. As I, go, as I close, let me pray with you. Dear Heavenly Father, yes, we can call you Father because you created us. You also chose to give us redemption because you loved us. I accept you, Father. I accept you as my dear and real Heavenly Father. And by your grace, 
dear Lord. Help me to depend upon you in every aspect of my life so that by your power I will be able to love you and live for you, to love others and to live a life that you want me in this world, to love and live as a worthy child of yours. Thank you because you promised us to be there until you come with Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for having me tonight, for giving me this opportunity to share God's word together. I believe that we can be all blessed by the message of tonight. the creator, source, sustainer, and sovereign of all creation. He is just and holy, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God is God, our Father and Creator. We are subject to His authority because He made us and gifted us an existence. To know God the Father is so important because it helps us to understand and to know God in an intimate way. We can see how God loves His children and takes care of them. He is always looking out for their best interests, even eternally. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your time spent with us tonight. We hope that you will be with us again another truth about God and His words. Remember, God has more for you in His words. Open your hearts to Him and be changed as, as we proclaim. proclaim.